Today I'm going to be brewing an extract lager beer based on the homebrew lager can from Woolworths using half a packet of Brew Enhancer 2, one and a half kilos of light dry malt, some hops, Hallertau middle fruit and Czech Sars, with W3470 yeast, which I took off the yeast cake from my last lager beer. I'll then be mixing this in my Cooper's fermenter bucket and ferment it under pressure in my Fermenter King Chubby. The first thing I need to do is get my Cooper's fermenter bucket ready with some sanitizer, making sure to remember to sanitize the tap. The goal with this beer is to find out whether or not I can produce a decent beer with the cheapest possible ingredients I could find, which was a tin of lager beer extract from Woolworths supermarket. This lager extract is more than likely made by Cooper's themselves and is exactly the same as a Cooper's lager extract except that it's $5 cheaper. And hopefully with the extra ingredients, this is going to make a decent beer, but only time will tell. Once I've got enough sanitizer in my Cooper's bucket, I give it a swirl, put it aside and grab my Fermenter King Chubby. And I proceed to fill that with about three or four liters of sanitizer as well so I can continually shake it throughout the brew so it's ready later on. For this beer, I've got approximately 21 litres of tap water, and to that tap water, I've treated it with two grams of calcium sulfate, one gram of calcium chloride and four mils of phosphoric acid, as well as some sodium metabisulfate. These additions will give me approximately 60 milligrams of calcium, 60 milligrams of calcium sulfate and 60 milligrams of calcium chloride to make water with a one to one ratio, which would be pretty ideal for a lager like this. Once I filled my 20 litre jerry can with approximately 21 litres of water, as I fill it right to the top of the spout, I then take 10 litres of that water and put it into a 10 litre container and refrigerate it overnight. That way I've got water which is around 2 degrees Celsius, which I'll use later on to knock the temperature of my brew down after I add hot water. And you'll see how that works later on. The next thing I need to do is get my hops ready to be added later on. I'm going to do a hot steep on my stove top with about four liters of water. I'm going to heat this water to boiling so I can sanitize my hop spider for five minutes. Once that's done, I'll turn the water off and let it settle and add my hops. Today I'll be adding 20 grams of Hallertau middle fruit and 20 grams of Czech Sars. And overall with the can, I should be getting an IBU of roughly 40 to 45. The hops will spend 20 minutes steeping before I remove them from the stove and use the hop infused water to mix my brew. Back in my brew shed, I shake my bucket one last time to mix the sanitizer around. Then I prepare my can of liquid extract by putting it in a bowl with boiling water to soften its contents. The hop spider for Mangrove Jacks is fantastic. With its 800 micron mesh, it does allow some of the material to pass through into the water, but it still retains a nice chunk of hops inside the hop spider as you can see here. There's a good inch thick layer of them in the bottom. With the hop infused water back in the brewery ready to mix, it's time to get the sanitizer out of the bucket and start filling it with some cold water. To 
To start the mixing process, I add about four liters of my room temperature water to the bucket. Then it's time to carefully remove the can from the bowl of boiling water and open it with a sanitized can opener. The can of hot liquid extract goes directly into the bucket first. I get all the contents in and mix it in thoroughly. making sure to fill the can with some boiled brewing water to get every last drop. Which I pour into my hop infused water, which I'll now use to mix my dry ingredients. The first one that I'm gonna put in is the Brew Enhancer 2. I've got half a packet of this leftover from another brew, and that's going to add some dextrose and some maltodextrin to the brew. The next packet I add is 500 grams of light dry malt. This was also a packet I had left over from another brew. And the last packet I'm gonna add is a full one kilo of light dry malt for a total of 1.5 kilos of light dry malt and 500 grams of Brew Enhancer 2. And I then mix this thoroughly into the hop infused water. Once the contents of the pot are thoroughly mixed, I pour them into my Cooper's bucket on top of the three or four litres of cool water I've already got in there. That'll instantly take the temperature of the water down and prevent any damage to the bucket. I give that a good stir and now I start to add my regular brewing water. With 12 litres of liquid now in the bucket, it's time to add about 9 litres from my cold brewing water out of the fridge to get this up to 21 litres. And the added cold water knocks the overall temperature down to about 22 degrees Celsius, which is nearly ideal. I take a hydrometer reading at this point to see if I'm matching up to my recipe. And to my surprise, my hydrometer reading comes in at 1061, which is substantially higher than the 1047 that Beersmith predicted for this recipe. I'm not entirely sure what's gone wrong at this point, but I can only assume that Beersmith 3 has underestimated the potential gravity of the 1.7 kilos of liquid malt, which is probably a fault of the data I got online, which was entered into Beersmith itself. So with that surprise out of the way, I decide now to up the volume of my brew to try and knock down that OG as much as possible. I wasn't really looking for a 6.5% lager, something more in the 5% range will do just fine. So I proceed to add every last drop of brewing water that I've still got. And with that, I managed to get my original gravity down to about 1054, which is as good as it's gonna get. With all the brewing water now thoroughly mixed in, it's time to get this wort out of the bucket and into my Fermenter King Chubby. But before I do that, I need to get all the sanitizer out. I'll give the fermenter one more shake to spread the sanitizer around the inside. Before I push half the sanitizer out the beer line to make sure all the lines inside are sanitized. 
With that done, I'll release the pressure, open the lid and pour the rest out. I retrieve my funnel, which has been swimming in my bucket of sanitizer. I get it into my Fermenta King Chubby, get my Cooper's bucket positioned over the top, and off we go. The wort splashes around really well and gets some really good aeration in the process. With the wort transferred to the Fermenta King Chubby, I get the lid back on and lift it up onto the desk. I only did this so the camera could see it more clearly. These fermenters are great, but they're an absolute mongrel to move around as they don't have any handles. The only way you can carry them is with your fingertips under the lid. And I've already dislodged the black base on the fermenter, trying to pick it up full. So whilst this is a great fermenter, the lack of a handle makes it really difficult to use in the brewery. I sanitize my hands and I retrieve my W3470 yeast. The first thing I do is open it and check the smell to make sure it smells good. And then I pour it straight in. It's at this point I wasn't even thinking. I was just in the zone making beer and the only thing I could think of was I need to get this sucker in the fridge and get it fermenting. But I forgot I was actually going to wait till it cooled down a bit before I pitched my yeast. But in the heat of the moment I just poured it straight in. Oh well, it is W3470 so I can handle higher temperatures and at this point my wort is about 21.5 degrees Celsius. So with the yeast in now, I seal the fermenter up, I get some gas onto it, and I pressurize it up to about three or four PSI so I can set my spunding valve. Once it's set, I get it in my fridge and get the fridge cooling down to 11 degrees Celsius, where I'm gonna start the fermentation. After three days, I close the spunding valve down to one bar or 15 PSI and lift the temperature to 13. Then after three more days, I lift it to 16 and then right up to 20 for a diacetyl rest. Thanks for watching me today brew this extract beer. Hopefully it turns out well, and I'll see you soon for a tasting.